Hello everybody and welcome to another video in this Linux for Programmers tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be going through some common networking commands that you should know as a programmer when using a Linux machine. Now, I'm not going to be talking about these commands in a ton of depth. I'm just going to kind of show them to you, make you aware that they exist, give you an idea of what their output really is, and then you can kind of look them up further if there's some more specific stuff that you want to know about them. So the first command that I want to show you here is called ifconfig. This is a very common command. Most of you probably know this or have heard of it before. And what this command does is give you information about your network interface devices or your network interfaces. So I'm not going to explain what all of this means because there's a lot. And quite frankly, I'm not qualified to explain all of this detailed networking stuff, uh, but I'll just quickly go through what this actually means. So first of all, you can see the different devices that are connected to your machine on the left hand side here. Uh, now, some of these devices could be hardware devices, so physical devices connected on your machine, or they could be virtual. Now, in our case, we have one hardware device, which is represented by F0, and one software device or one virtual device, uh, which is low. Now, LO actually stands for loopback. I'm not going to really talk about this, uh, but if you know what a loopback is, or you know what a loopback virtual um, network interface is, then I mean, you know what this means. Anyways, now let's talk about F0. So F0 is your physical Ethernet connection. Um, this is typically just what represents it. You see an F0. For most of your machines, you're only going to see two devices here. But if you had Wi-Fi or you had a second LAN port or whatever it may be, you may see some other devices connected. But anyways, this is our hardware device. And if we want to see the IP address related to this, well, we can see the IPv4 address right here and the IPv6 addresses down here. So again, I'm not really going to go any further than that. Uh, you can see this says Ethernet and there's some more information that if you understand, well, you'll know and you can read through. So anyways, that is ifconfig. Now that's helpful, but sometimes we don't actually need to see all that information or we don't want to see all that information. Instead, we just want to find our IPv4 or our IPv6 address. So very commonly, especially when you're running kind of a hobby project or something, you want to know the IPv4 or IPv6 address of your machine. To find this out in a little bit of a nicer interface, you can type the command IP-4 and then ADDR. Now this is going to show you your IPv4 address. You can also type out IP-6. This will show you your IPv6 address. So let's start with four. When we go here, we can see our IPv4 address showing up here and other information related to that. Now, when you're looking for the address or when you're trying to find the address, sorry, you're going to be looking for INET and then a number followed after it. Now, typically when you just see INET, that means IPv4. When you see INET6, that means IPv6. If you don't know the difference between them, don't worry. Um, not a huge deal. Again, I'm not going to get into all the networking stuff. This is really just if you needed to know this, this is how you find this information. All right, so now IP-6, you can see now that we see our IPv6 address represented by INET6. All right, so that's those two commands there. That's all I really want to talk about related to IP addresses. Uh, again, this is just meant to give you an idea of the commands and not talk about them really in depth. Next, what I'm going to show you is another command. Now, this command is called netstat. What netstat is going to do is show you detailed information about the network connectivity or network activity on your Linux machine. So if you type netstat and press enter, you're going to see what to me at least just looks like a bunch of cryptic text it doesn't really mean much. But if you're someone who does need to look at all of the active ports, all of the listening ports, you want to see what protocols um, different connections are on and which connections are active on your machine, you're going to use netstat to do that. So I'm not going to go through all of the output here. Uh, if you don't understand this, chances are you probably don't need to know most of this. Uh, but if you want to find detailed information related to the network activity, netstat's the command you're going to use. Now, I'll quickly show you a few more netstat commands that might show you some more useful things. So if you want to look at, first of all, all of the listening ports for TCP and UDP connections, what you're going to print out or what you're going to type here is netstat hyphen A. So netstat A will show you all of the listening ports for TCP and UDP connections. So when I print this out, you see we get a very similar thing, except now we can see all of the listening ports as well, or all of the listening connections. All right, so that's netstat hyphen A. Now there's a few more netstat commands to show you as well. The next one is netstat hyphen AT. Now AT is going to show you all of the TCP port connections, so only TCP. So AT is only TCP. When I type that out, we can see all of the TCP connections right here. 
All right, the next command to show you, this one is called netstat hyphen L. So netstat hyphen L, this is simply gonna show you all of the active ports. So when I do this, we get all of our active ports printing out. And then lastly, if you wanna see all of just the UDP connections or UDP ports that are listening, you can say netstat hyphen U, and this will show you all of the UDP ports. Now you can see we don't have any that are listening right now, so nothing's showing up. Again, if you don't understand this, don't worry. Uh, these are just for people that need to find this information. Well, these are the commands you can use to do so. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a much more useful command that you probably will find yourself using, and this is called curl. Now, curl is kind of a way to test out an endpoint or send a request to a URL. So I'm just gonna show you what curl does by default. So if I just type curl and then I follow that with an address, so HTTPS uh, colon slash slash and then techwithtim.net, that's my website. You'll see by default, this sends a get request to this website uh, and then we get all of this HTML showing up right here. So it will actually return to you whatever, uh, I guess, the get request for the endpoint that you're sending it to gives you. So of course, we're not really getting anything meaningful because my website is able to detect if robots are trying to scrape it. So we say, you know, you can see in the meta name equals robots, which just means we're not going to get really a valid response back. Anyways, I'm going to clear this, but that's kind of the basics of curl. If you don't type anything else and you just type curl and then endpoint, it will by default send a get request to that endpoint and then print out the response. Now curl is much more useful than that though. You can also send post requests. You can send data and parameters. If I wanted to send a post request, what I could do is curl hyphen X. This is the method and then type post. Now when I type post, that simply says send a post request. Then the URL that I want to send this to, so HTTPS colon techwithtim.net, then what you'll see is again, we get some HTML here pretty much saying, hey, this is a robot sending this. We're not going to give you a valid response. So that is how you send a post request. You just do the hyphen X. The hyphen X stands for the method. So when you type hyphen X after it, it's expecting a method. So you could do post, you could do put, you could do delete, you could do get, whatever method you're trying to send, that's what you do with hyphen X. Now, oftentimes when you're sending a post request or a put request or whatever it is, you wanna send some data with that. Now there's multiple ways to send data with a post request. One of the easiest ways to do it is to add the data flags. So you can say hyphen data, and then inside of double quotations, what you can do is you can type all of the parameters followed by their value. So we'd say P1 standing for parameter one equals value one. Then if we wanted to send multiple parameters, we would put the and sign. Then we could say P2 equals value two. And that means we would send this data alongside with our post request or put request or whatever it is. So if I do this, you can see could not resolve host. So it seems as though we got an error. The reason we got an error is because I messed up the flag here. Uh, hyphen data, sorry, it needs to be hyphen hyphen data. So two, not one. And now you can see this actually works. We don't get this uh, could not resolve host uh, issue popping up. Anyways, that's one way to send data. Uh, let me clear the screen here just so this is a little bit easier. Okay, another way to send data is to actually use the hyphen D flag. So if I say hyphen D, what's expected after this is the name of my parameter and then an equal sign and then the value. So you'd say hyphen D uh, param one equals and then value. And now I'm actually able to send this if I add a T to the end of uh, my URL here. So now you can see this actually works. And if I use hyphen D, if I want to send more than one parameter, then I would say hyphen D and then repeat the process. And you can keep adding hyphen Ds to send multiple parameters. So whatever method you like, uh, you can use to do that. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do with curl is to save the content or the output or whatever you want to call it, the response essentially from the server to a file. To save the response from the server to a file, you type curl hyphen lowercase o, the name of the file. So we could say, uh, you know, response like this, and then the URL that you want to send this request to. So HTTP, and then, sorry, this is s colon slash slash techwithtim.net. Now, when we do this, you're going to see that we actually get some output here showing us that this was downloaded. Now, if I type ls, you can see that we should have a file named response. And if I look in this file response, so I say cat and then response, uh, you can see that this is what is inside of it. So that's how you easily save the content or the response from a request 
to a file on your machine. Now, another thing that you can do with curl is you can look at the header information from a response. So sometimes you don't really care about the response itself. You just want to see the header that comes back with it. So to do that, you can say curl hyphen I, and then again, uh, the URL you want to send this to. So HTTPS colon slash slash tech with Tim dot net. And then you can see that this is the header that comes back with our response. And I believe, no, this didn't show the response. Sorry. I was looking above. But anyways, yeah, you can see the HTTP header. That's what hyphen capital I shows you. Now, there's a few more things you can do with curl. You can say curl hyphen hyphen help, and you can see all of the different options. Obviously, I can't go through all of these with you, but it's a really useful tool, especially if you just want to quickly test out an endpoint because uh, you don't need to write a script to do it. You can just, you know, curl the endpoint and quickly see if everything is working as you expect it. Now, the last thing I'll show you with curl is how you can send a header with your request. So sometimes you need a custom header, maybe for an authorization token or something uh, to do that. You would say curl hyphen hyphen header. And then after that, you would simply type out the header you want. So something like content hyphen type colon and then application slash JSON. And then maybe if you want to send a post request, you could say, you know, hyphen X post, you could pass your data here, you know, param one equals X and then to your URL endpoint. So let's say techwithtim.net. And you're going to see that, I mean, this doesn't do anything. We don't have an endpoint here that's accepting this information, but that's how you would do that. So that's how you send a header, you specify its post request, and you send a parameter equal to X. All right. So that is the basics of curl. Uh, now I'll just show you one like real example of using curl because I feel like showing the fake ones isn't that useful. I'll show you how we can actually just curl this endpoint that's free on the internet. So this is just an API that requires no authorization and just gives you jokes when you hit its endpoint. So when I hit this one right here, you can see that we actually get a bunch of jokes popping up. So this does indeed work uh, if you use a correct endpoint. So the last command I'm going to show you here is actually called ping. Now what ping will do is simply send packets to an address or to the domain that you specify here. Uh, and then it will tell you if you're getting a response from it. So typically you're pinging something. If you want to see if it's online, if you want to make sure that it's active and it's working, or if you want to see if it's blocking your request, for example. So if I say ping, and then I put in, let's just say google.com here, uh, you'll notice that we are pinging this and we're actually getting a response from google.com. It's telling you how many packets or how many bytes you send, uh, what you're receiving and, and all of that. Now, ping will just continually run. You can just keep pinging something for as long as you want. And to stop this command, you simply type control C uh, and that will stop the ping. It will then tell you how many packets were transmitted, how many received the packet loss and, and all of that. So again, you can look up ping if you want more information on it. Super simple. You're just really testing if something's giving you some kind of response. You don't care what the response is. You just want to see if you're getting something. And well, that's why you use ping. So there's not really much more to go through with networking or ping in general. I mean, if you wanted some more information on ping, you could type ping hyphen hyphen help, and then it's going to show you all the things that you can do. Obviously, I, I can't walk you through all these commands in depth because there's just so much to show. But that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So we went through IF config, we went through IP, we talked about netstat, we talked about curl, which in my opinion is the most useful thing in this video. Then we talked about ping. Uh, I apologize if I didn't give you too much information on all of these commands. Again, I'm not a networking expert. I'm just trying to show you what these commands are, give you a really basic idea of how they work and what they're used for. And that way, if you're using a Linux machine, you at least know that these exist uh, and you know that you could find the information you're looking for using these commands. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another Linux for Programmers tutorial video.